I'm Daz. Um, I've got another kit to play with. Let's bring in Mr. Scissors and uh, see if I can get into it. Yes, I can. <laughs> it's a talking clock kit. This looks fun. Um, I was looking for a. Can't even get into the bag without breaking it. I was looking for a, a present for a friend. It was unusual, so I thought, yeah, why not to uh, build something personal? Well, it's got a plastic case, some other parts in here. Looks like it's all, uh, all contained in these parts. Oh, we can get a, a nice looking circuit board, nice big displays, and a secondary board. Nuts and bolts and some instructions. Which to my relief are actually in English, so that's good. So I've set my uh, parts up on the bench. There's a few things I wasn't expecting really. There's an LED here. Um, there's an LDR, a light dependent resistor. For mister, I imagine that's the temperature. This looks like to hold the battery, quite sure what sort of battery that is. Only a couple of electrolytics, a handful of ceramics, transistors there for driving the LEDs, um, four of them are used for multiplexing, 10k, I think, and 330. I haven't quite worked the color codes out yet. There's a loudspeaker. This board appears to be the voice synthesizer which appears to be communicated over a serial bus power connector, some nuts and bolts this is probably to make the display look a little bit brighter sort of diffuser um, 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 kilohertz crystal um, it divides into one second so it's very common as what you find in a watch or something so that's where your timekeeping is coming from there's a couple of 22 picofarads here, so they no doubt set the timekeeping of that. I might fit a preset if I can't get it entirely accurate, but you never know. And uh, power lead to uh, USB. Nice looking board. This little glass device is the Femista, and if I put my finger across it, you, uh, onto it, you can see the resistance is going down, so that's a NTC Femista. And that's fed into the ADC, the looks of it, so that the microprocessor knows the temperature. So that's what Femista does. This is a light dependent resistor. So um, as it gets brighter, the resistance goes down. And as you shield it from light, the resistance goes higher, as you can see. That's not particularly high. I'm, I no doubt if I could get it darker, it would go higher. But you can see the general principle. <clears throat> And it's not the most quick reacting device either. So that obviously tells the microprocessor by another ADC input, analog digital conversion input, um, what the brightness is, um, it, where the clock is located. Well, the manual says to start with the resistor, which is where I'm going to start. It's the other side of the PCB, the main business part of it, I guess. Um, these are five band resistors, whereas the other ones are four band, so that's why it's got a red rather than an orange in it um, to indicate 10k. So anyway, I'll get on with this and uh, we'll come back later. Well, I've put my first parts in. What I like is that the 10k's and the 330 ohms are all together, so it's very easy to work out where they've got to go. Put the capacitors in. They're 100 nanofarad and as usual they measure about 40. Nothing new there. Crystal's in and it's uh, two setting uh, capacitors. So uh, I'll just get on and uh, populate this. <laughs> I didn't notice but uh, they're very conveniently labelled, the resistors. So there should be no doubt on what value. I noticed the LED is actually marked negative and positive so that wasn't too bad. There is a heat sinking pad at the back but that's not really easy to utilize unless you use solder paste I guess. Capacitors look well marked 
there's some lines where the negative is and it's clear on the diagram as they're obviously polarity sensitive um, and there's markings here for the IC sockets as well which is good well we're making some progress here um, the Fimister seems to stick out the case so I've bent it like this I've been careful not to bend too close to the glass put the VDR uh, VDR LDR light dependent resistor bent it like that I assume that doesn't stick out the case from what I can tell um, so all the transistors are the same which is nice um, so that makes it a little bit easier if I just come out a minute so I'm guessing that uh, yeah it'll go like this basically oh I don't know I think the Fimister's probably about right yeah okay okay so far so good now one little mystery was this capacitor here it appears the capacitor in the series with the output of the uh, speaker from this uh, chip but uh, it's not there uh, I've got the capacitor but it's not there so whether it's been deleted I'm not sure they've made uh, a very neat little uh, surface mount to uh, dill converter here just soldered the pins in so uh, yeah that's quite a good little idea I, I quite like that idea well what's occurred to me is that uh, once you fit the LEDs in place and uh, notice I seem to have a bit of an alignment problem I'll have a look at this but uh, once you fix these LEDs in place um, you're not going to fix any faults so I'm hoping that the through holes will um, be sufficient to cause an electrical connection now I've also made up my own lead on the power pack with some current limiting um, I worked out it was positive tip by doing some continuity so I've got this wrong you can watch me blow it up so let's see oh well there we go I've got something happening Kind of got to hold these buttons in for five seconds to reset it. Oh, I've got an LED lit up, <laughs> but I think the problem's going to be perhaps the through hole plating isn't quite making the connections. But uh, we heard it speak, so right. Well, after telling me it was 40 o'clock. Seems to be okay now, I think. Not quite sure what all this is. I'm not I think it's blown out slightly on the display, but twelve o'clock. Aha. Uh -huh. So there we go. That looks like that's working. I guess once this is attached. That should look better on the camera now, that's better. So uh yes, that's uh, looking quite successful at the moment. It's drawing 30 milliamps at the moment uh, from the supply um, early when I had the LED on it was about 120 but uh, a couple of other notes this display is in upside down so that you've got the double colon now that's a clever idea I like that um, there's a plastic sheet that comes off and this has got to go on you've got to cut it yourself to the right size so I shall try not to make a mess of that. Yes, this film is self-adhesive. Um, you definitely need fingernails to get that apart. And I've creased it slightly, but never mind. Well, we seem to be getting on quite nicely. I uh, had a look at the uh, Q code and found some additional online information. So you use your bit of foam to hold the... Uh, speaker in position the only thing I'm not sure about it being conductive foam but it's so inconductive I don't think that matters also think that's the correct battery a 1220 um, I assume that means 12 millimeters across and two millimeters thick so that's for the um, actual clock chip itself so that uh, keeps this powered up even when you've got no USB power source so that the uh, crystal keeps oscillating and the time keeps going so uh, that's uh, what that's for so I shall uh, get that in 
at the uh, usual interesting nut clamped in the uh, perspex. That's good, as long as you don't over tighten it I guess. So I'll pop the battery in and we'll check there's a voltage there. Well I'm really struggling to get this battery in. Um, wondering if the battery clip is slightly deformed. Or oh, it's the wrong battery, one of the two. Let's see if I can just straighten the edges up of the battery holder very carefully. Let's see if the battery will now go in. Yes, there we go. Success, the battery has gone in. Right, so that's pin eight, uh, is it? Yes, that's pin 8, and which one is the ground for? Let's see if we've got some juice. Yes, 3.299, so I've got the backup voltage working for the clock chip, so that's good news. Um, I don't think I'm putting too much pressure on the speaker. That's the only thing that I was worrying about. I'm not putting too much pressure on it. Right, I'll finish uh, assembling it, I guess. After dropping the nuts and bolts inside a few times, I decided, well, maybe it's possible to put the lid on with the uh, nuts and bolts on already, but, ooh, yeah, just about, I think. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. Oh, that's better. Yes. That one doesn't seem to want to go in properly, but yeah. Okay, haven't tightened it up. I can see that the plastic touching is causing a bit of a mark. You can see that. Anyway, but uh, let's just look round it. Okay, time to power up again, I guess. Um, I would have gone find a USB power supply really, but uh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah. is it going to work? If the wires don't touch, yes, so I'll need to do a reset, I guess, which is the function key and plus key. Oh, all of the all the buttons, right? Five seconds. go let's reset it so 12 o'clock so that's how you set it current time is 2003 so press the function button again 2003 press again that's the alarm time so I wake up at eight o'clock in the morning press the function again let's make it 8 10 and then I think you push it once more. Yeah, so when that digit's on, that alarm will work. So in the function menu, the other thing I didn't work out was time, alarm time, alarm on off, and there's another time. Now that is the time. Time to end the hourly chime, 9 a.m. to, ah, so I wonder if, so that's the start time of the chime, and I assume that's the finish time of the chime, so that's 9 a.m. to 2300. Now, press it again, ah, there we go. So that's the chime function on. So this chime function will work between 9 and 2300, 11 o'clock at night. Uh -huh. And then we go back to time. So that's the bit I was missing. So that's the function key at the top. So this one's the plus. So now with this one, you can calibrate the temperature. Oh, I see. It's about 21 in here, so that's right. So press that one. So that must be the year. Yep, press that one. Right, so that's 2020. 
Do I press that one again? No, press the bottom one. Oh, I see. So it's like the opposite way around. So what's this? I suppose it depends how it's set. So it's the fourth month and it's the six. Okay. What's the next function? Five. So this is the weekday. Hmm. I don't really understand that because where do you start on the weekday? I've no idea. Uh, is Sunday one? Monday two? Tuesday three? I don't know. Hmm. So how do you come out of this? I'm going to be going round in a circle again. Ah, there you go, I'm out. Right, so I assume that's right. So this will now cycle round. Right, so that's time, temperature. Let's see what it changed to. There we go, that's the date. Now I think I can change that order in the next menu and day three. And then back to time, yeah. So if you press the voice button and the function button together. Ah, so that is what it displays in a circular motion as it were. I uh, see so you can change it one, two and three. That's either 12 or 24 hour mode. Centigrade or Fahrenheit. And that's presumably back out of the menu. Oh, that's cool. Right, so pressing that. 2012. And if you hold it, turns the LED on. Hold it again. LED goes off, so that's quite easy. This display uses something called multiplexing, that is only one of these is addressed at a time, that's what the transistors are for. So this one is switched on, this one switched on, this one switched on and this one switched on. In rapid order, so I'm going to turn up the shutter speed. This is one four thousandths of a second shutter speed and now you can see that the display is definitely multiplexed. Right, so connect it up properly now to a USB. There we go, and the time is still right, so the battery must be working okay. That's good stuff. Oh. Is that snooze or stop alarm at the top? I wonder. So I've locked my iris and shutter, so let's try turning the light off and see if it dims. And it does. Good, so that completes another bit of testing. Chime test. 21 o'clock. Oh, so that's the chime. <laughs> cool. Well, that's the uh, talking alarm clock kit. Hope you, hope, you found, hope you found that interesting. Um, it's nice just to build a kit and uh, not have to think. Um, it's of a repair or a build from scratch. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.